Hey guys, so, so I'm going to show you how to string a tennis racket. And so uh, this is like a stringer, basically a drop weight stringer. So if you come in here, uh, I've already got the tennis, the racket mounted. And so uh, this one actually has six points. This is, I guess you can call it kind of a better stringer. So it's got six points that the racket is being held by. And then there's the clamps in the middle. Uh, these are actually better clamps too because there's actually uh, fly, fly clamps, which are basically just, they fly. So they're just hanging from the strings. And so it's basically what we're going to be working on. So uh, this is the drop, the actual drop weight actually. Moves, you know. You'll see how that works later. So uh, we'll get started. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is measure out your string. And so a good point of reference is a wingspan is five feet. And so my racket happens to be 95 square inches, which is you need about 35 feet to string. So just need to do, what is that, seven of these. So it's one, two, three, seven. So that's 35 feet of string, and then you just need to cut it. So <clears throat> take your, uh, your pliers, your wire cutters, and then what I like to do is cut it at an angle, so like at a 45 degree angle, and cut the string, and that way you get a nice angle. All right, so the reason we cut the string at an angle like this is because when you see me stringing later, you're going to see instances where you see the string go through the same grommet twice, and so with an angle it makes it easier for the string to go through the grommet. Okay, so an important thing to do before you actually start stringing is make sure there's no knots in your string. So what I do is I just feed my hand all the way through the string and make sure I've got both ends. And then from there I don't let one of the ends go and I you know, put it through the grommets and get ready to go. All right, so I'm gonna talk about the string pattern on this racket. Um, the string pattern is 16 by 18. So what that means is there's uh, 16 mains, which are the vertical, strings and 18 crosses which are the horizontal um, you know strings and so if you look down here there's six since it's an 18 by uh, a 16 by 18 uh, string pattern there's going to be six holes on the bottom and so what you want to do is start in the middle here because there's six there's six strings <laughs> at the bottom so if you have an 18 by 20 string pattern there'd be eight you know Eight string, eight mains here, and so in that case, you would want to start from the top and go in. All right, so I'm just going to explain how to do how to string a racket on a 16 by 18 string pattern. So if you see here, there's going to be 16 divided by two is eight, so each half of the the racket's going to have eight mains. So you look it's one, two, three, four, five, six. So when you get to main six, you're going to skip one. And main seven is going to be the next grommet. And then for main eight, you're actually going to skip one. So you're going to skip that one. And then this will be this one here is uh, main eight. And so that's, you know, to finish off the, the side of the racket. Okay, so uh, the first thing you want to do is what we, what we do is we string one half, just the eight mains first. And then you're going to string the rest of the racket all at once. So a good way to measure the first eight mains is just take the string from where you got it and then just pull it across eight times. So one, two, eight. And I also do it one more time because you need extra string for to you know for your tension when you're doing your drop weight. So we do one more, nine. And so that way you have enough string at the end when you need to tie it off. Now that we've got our string measured out for this half of the racket, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull the rest of the string through the racket because we're gonna save this for later. So once you have this pulled all the way through, you want to make sure you tension, you just use your fly clamp, not your fly clamp, your clamp clamp, and clip it, and then for this, this stringer happens, you know, tighten it there so it doesn't move, and then you're ready to start stringing, you're ready to start tensioning each one of the individual mains. Okay, so now we're ready to actually start stringing, so what you want to do first is just put the string into your tensioner. And then what you want to do is you want to just bring it over. And the way you know that the string is at the correct tension is the drop weight will it'll be hanging parallel to the ground. So right now it's not all the way parallel. It's going farther. So what I'm going to do is keep tensioning it until it goes parallel, just like that. And then we're ready to put first clamp on. So clamp it here. And then you're ready to go to the next string. Okay, so I finished all the mains on this side. So now all you have to do is tie this off. And so 
The, the knot I usually use is a double half hitch knot. So the way you do that is you got the string on this side. So you're going to put it through. You're going to go under and wrap it around on the other side of that same string. And you're going to put it through the extra string that you have. That's your double half hitch. And then what you want to do is tighten it and then do the same thing over again. Okay, so the uh, next thing we're going to do is I'm done with the, the mains now, so we're going to start with the crosses. And so the reason you cut the string at an angle like this is because we have to put this string through, you know, that grommet right there, which is the string, you know, all the way through it. So what we do is you just take it, and then what I'm going to do is just put it through this grommet. And having it cut at an angle makes it a lot easier to get it in there. Okay, so for this first cross, you can start either under or over, it doesn't matter. And so the way you want to do this is you're going to, you can either snake it through each main. So what that looks like is you just take two fingers. And so this is under, so you want to go over this string. And then under, over, just keep going. So when you snake it, it just looks like this. So you just take your two fingers and pull the string under over each main. Okay, so that's one way to do it, to snake it like that, but the way I prefer doing it, because I think it's easier, is I just use my fingers and I pull a little bit of extra string, well, a lot of extra string, and then I just use my fingers the same way, but I don't snake the end, I just take whatever extra part of string. So this puts this string, this main under, and the next main's gonna go over, and then under, over, so I just use my fingers like this, but I use the extra string, which for me is easier than snaking it. You pull it through, and then put it through. And this one actually has, it's stuffed through two, so I actually gotta use the, my little tool, and jam it through the grommet like that, and then I can pull it. Okay, so once you've uh, strung your, your cross all the way through, uh, what you wanna do is you know, pull the string all the way through, but you don't want to pull it through the mains too fast because you're going to cause a lot of friction. And what that's going to do is it's going to cut into your mains, which is basically going to make them not last as long. So what you want to do to relieve that tension is to use your fingers and hold it up like this and pull it and then keep pulling it. You can actually pull it faster because there's not that much tension. And that way, you know, you don't mess up your strings. Okay, so we're on the next cross. And so you want to make sure that Every cross, every main is alternating. So if you see here on this first cross, it's over. So we want to make sure that this next cross it's under. So you'll see it's under here. And then just make sure that everything is like that. All your crosses, all your mains are alternating. Okay, so basically done with the racket. So here's the knot, the double half hitch. And then what you want to do to tighten it is just to make sure there's no slack. So just pull it up and then back. And then what you want to do is use your stringer to tighten it. And just make sure you don't tighten it too tight because you're going to break the string if you do it too tight. And then you have to start all over. So just make sure you do it just, just tight enough. And then go ahead and do your, subble, your second double half hitch and then you're done. And then tighten it. Okay. And then take the clamps off. And then you're done.